So here we go. I see. Um, and I will have the stream up so you can all go back and watch and recreate this, um, this flyer. So we are going to start off by, first of all, creating a new campus. So you want to go to file, click on new, and you want to go ahead and choose whatever dimension you want, but we are going to stick with a 10 by 10. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to go ahead and zoom out so we can all see the size of the canvas, okay? If you just joined us, you are so welcome. I'm so excited about today's tutorial. We are going to do this. So if, you, um, if you're ready, let's begin. All right, so the first thing we are going to do is to set our background, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and bring in the different elements that we are going to use. So the first image is this um, image that I'm going to drop in, and I'm going to set that at the very top, and I'm going to go ahead to scale it um, till it fills up my page, and I'm going to set it in like that. I'm going to double click to accept. Um, watching from Uganda. Nice to meet you, DJ. So if you click on your image and you don't see the activations, all you need to do is go to edit and then click on transform and scale and you should be able to scale it. So with this set, I'm going to double click to accept. Now the next layer of element we need to apply is a bit of uh, a gradient effect. So we are going to do two things. We are going to apply a solid color first. So you wanna click on your adjustment and then you wanna go ahead and choose solid color. So once you choose your solid color, we wanna choose something in the blue-ish. So I'm going to use my color picker and I'm going to choose something more in this color tone or we'll go with the cyan. I'm going to go ahead to click OK. Now we are going to reduce the opacity of this so we can still see our background, but it's not too much. So with this set, we are going to go ahead and add um, a gradient. So I'm going to click on my gradient and I'm going to go ahead with my gradient fill. I'm going to choose a different color. So click on your gradient, click on your color stop, click on that. Hello from India, Sam. You're all welcome. Now we are going to go ahead and choose a darker color. And I'm going to make sure I'm in the cyan. So we do still get a darker color on the bottom. So just like this, you wanna go ahead and click OK. And the far end, we wanna click on that as well and change that and pick up any of the color that you see in here. Now we can choose to do that or we can keep it on the white. And I think that I'm going to leave that on the white and I'm gonna go ahead to click OK and click OK. Now we wanna change the angle of our gradient. So just go ahead and play with your angle and we are going to set it in the corner. So you see that I have one at the far corner right there and I'm gonna go ahead to click OK and I'm going to uh, go back and make a copy. So I'm gonna click on that, actually double click on the gradient and let's see if we can make it a little bit more darker like that. So you notice that I pulled up my stop. I'm gonna go ahead to click okay. We're gonna go ahead and make a copy of this. So hold down command J on your keyboard. It makes a copy. Now we wanna flip this copy to the opposite side. So click on your gradient thumbnail it will pull up your gradient fill. Now click on the angle to get it on the opposite side, just like this. Go ahead and click OK, and you are done. Now, if you have any questions, you can put it in the uh, comment below, and I'll go ahead and respond at the same time. So with this set, we want to go ahead and now bring in another form of element. So I'm going to go ahead and drag in a cloud. And I'm going to set that right at the top. I'm going to double click. Now this cloud came in as a PNG with no background. Now I'm going to go ahead and reduce the opacity of this just a little. So you click on your layer, go to your opacity, 
and then reduce it just slightly. So with this set, we are going to go ahead and bring in the next element. So I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop in this layer. I'm going to double click and I'm going to go ahead and scale it. Now, if you don't see these checks on your image, once you bring it in, all you need to do is click on Control T to activate your transform. So with this set, we are going to set this in the corner and I'm going to go ahead and scale it like this. I'm going to double click to accept. Now we don't want to see this. We want the inverse of the dotted black. We want it to be white. So you wanna to go to your image, you wanna click on adjustment and you wanna click on inverse. So when you click on inverse, it basically inverts your black and white for you. So with this set, we wanna go ahead and apply a layers adjustment. So click on your layer, go to your adjustment and we wanna go ahead and just play to see what options we have. Now you can use the dodge, the color dodge and you notice that it basically took away the black effect. Now, this is what we want. So with this set, we wanna go ahead and add a layers adjustment so we can basically clean up the image. So I'm gonna click on my um, layer, layer max and you notice that it applied it to it. So with this set, we want to pick up our brush tool. Now, when you apply layer max, you know, black hides white reveal. So black basically is going to hide anything that we don't want. So you want to make sure that your black and white default background is set to the black and white. Now you can flip in between to get the black on top or the white on top. So with this set, we wanna make sure that we begin to erase. Now, if you don't see your brush head, it means that your cap lock is on. Now, when I turn on my cap lock, you only see the cross cursor. So if you wanna see your brush size, turn on your, uh, turn off your cap locks. Now, when I erase, you notice that it's giving me a very smooth, gradual um, clean. Now, if you don't see that, you need to right click bring up your brush setting, make sure your hardness is set to zero and not to a hundred. So now I can come out of this using my left and right brackets. I can increase my brush size and I can go ahead and begin to brush and basically take off some of these areas that I don't want. Now with this set, we wanna go ahead and make a duplicate of this. So click on your layer, command J, make a copy, move that out and hold down shift and basically go ahead and rotate this so we have it on the opposite side. Now we can release and we can go ahead and drag and drop this in so it's showing up. Now um, I'm gonna go ahead and drag it and set that right there. So we have something like this. So with this two things set, we wanna go ahead and bring in the next image. So I'm going to drag and drop in this paper and I'm going to set that right here. And I'm going to go ahead to scale it like that and set that right there like this. Now we wanna go ahead and erase some portion of that paper. So I'm going to go ahead to add a layer max, pick up my brush tool and I'm going to go ahead to basically erase this portion like this. And we are going to make a duplicate of this. So command J, make a duplicate. Now we wanna flip this. So hold down shift and then flip this on the other side, bring that in like this and set that right there like that. Now we see that we have a bit of the white showing on the other end. We can actually leave it, it's not that bad. It adds a little bit more to our um, design. So with this set, we wanna go ahead and bring in the subject, okay? So we are going to go and pull this image in and I'm going to set that right there. Now I wanna clean up this image. I don't want the background. So I'm going to go to my quick action. Instead of using my quick action command, we're gonna go ahead and choose the select subject. And I'm going to just make a selection around the image. And notice that Photoshop will do very well to basically censor and basically cut out my subject for me. Now I wanna add a layer max. So click and add a layer max and it basically takes off the background. 
But when we zoom in, notice we have a little bit of this background still attached to our subject. So pick up your lasso tool. And we are going to pick the poly lasso tool. And we are going to go ahead and basically trace around his ear, just like this. It's just a quick thing. Now, you want to make sure you are on the layer max thumbnail. Pick up your brush tool with your foreground as black. You want to go ahead and paint and then command D to D select. I'm going to zoom out. Now, this is what we have. Okay, so with this set, we are going to go ahead and move our subject, zoom, um, rescale our subject in like that. We are going to scale him in just a little bit so he's not too big. So we have him like that. And I'm going to go ahead and basically erase the bottom portion of our subject. So we are going to pick up our brush tool and we are just going to go ahead and erase some portion of our subject. So we have him looking more like this. So with this set, we wanna go ahead and maybe increase him a little bit, make him a little bit bigger. Okay, so with, with this set, I'm gonna go ahead and erase just a little bit. Okay, so now that we have this, I wanna see if there's any question, no questions so far. Okay, so we are gonna go on. And um, if you just joined us, this is the final image that we are trying to create. So if you just joined us, just sit tight and watch. And I will also make this tutorial available after the session so you can basically go and watch it. So I'm going to go ahead and basically begin to bring in um, some text. But before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop in this uh, bird. And I'm going to go ahead and scale it and set that right there, like so. And I'm going to go ahead to rotate it just like this. I'm going to make a copy. So Command J, I'm making a copy. I'm going to set that here. Now with this, I'm going to scale it down just a little. And we are going to click on this one. And I'm going to go ahead and rotate like that. Now we want to flip this bird. So we're going to go to adjustment, click on transform and flip horizontal. So we have it on the opposite side. Now I'm going to go ahead and increase this bird just a little like that. And I'm going to decrease this one a little, rotate it just like that. Okay. So with this all set, oh, thank you, <laughs> Denise. <laughs> this is awesome. I know it's fun. So with this set, we want to go ahead. Oh, and by the way, if you see any flyer, if it's a birthday flyer, if it's a church flyer, any flyer that you see online that you don't know how to do and you want me to show you how to replicate that, you can go ahead and share that with me on my Instagram and I will do a tutorial on it. So just for you to know, this is actually a flyer I saw online and I wanted to replicate it so that people can see that even if you know how to design, you can still learn from people. So with this set, we want to go ahead and begin to type in the, um, the text, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and click on my font, and I'm going to click on my, um, my font option, and I'm going to choose a very basic font, and this is the Anzil Gin. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to go ahead and type in service and I'm going to click on my move tool and I'm going to go ahead to scale it, make it very big like that. And I'm going to double click on it. Now we wanna go ahead and add a gradient effect to this font. So I'm going to double click on my font and I'm going to go ahead and actually go and apply this basic font you see at the top, okay? So you see that that is applied and I'm going to go ahead to rotate my font and I'm going to set it in just like this. Hold down shift so that you get it in a perpendicular angle. So with this set, I'm gonna go ahead to pull this image, this layer and set it at the top so that it is on top of my subject. I'm going to go ahead and increase it a little just like that. Now we wanna change the color of the gradient. 
So double click on your gradient um, layer effect, click on it, click on your gradient. Now we wanna change this up. So I'm gonna click on the middle one, click on the color. Now we want something a little bit deeper. So something like this. Now I'm gonna go ahead to click, okay? Now what we have on both sides are good enough. We really don't have to change it. So I'm gonna go ahead to click, okay? and click OK. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a non-destructive of this font so that we can apply more effect to this layer. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go ahead to make a duplicate, Command J, and I'm going to hide the bottom one. So with this set, we want to go ahead and drag in a textured honeycomb to give this a very nice look. So I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop this in and I'm going to go ahead to scale it and set it somewhere like that, like this. And I'm gonna make duplicates of this. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and change the, um, ad the adjustment so we can basically have just the honeycomb without the background. So I'm gonna click on that and I'm going to zoom in. Now we wanna make duplicates of this. So I'm gonna type in Command J, make a duplicate. I'm gonna move that up so we can use it. And I'm going to make a copy of the two. Hold down Shift, select both layers. Command J, make a copy. And I'm going to move that and set that right there. So we have this look. Now I'm gonna make a copy of all four. Select the top one, hold down shift, select the bottom one, make a copy, command J. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out a little and we are going to move that and set that right there. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so we get this in the right place. So once we have all of the size of the honeycomb that we want. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little, and I'm going to move this and set that right there. Okay, so now that we have everything, I'm gonna make a selection of all eight. So select the top one, scroll all the way to the bottom to the last honeycomb, hold down shift, make a selection of all, right click, and we are going to go ahead and match all of these. So we are going to say match layers. Once we have it matched, we are going to go back and choose multiply. So now we only have the honeycomb without the background. I'm gonna go ahead and scale it just a little bit so it fits in between my text. So with this all set, we wanna go ahead and clip this to our image. So hold down shift, hold down options, and then clip it in between the line. So you notice that what happened was that it didn't really show up and it's because of the gradient effect I have. Now, if I turn off the gradient effect, you really don't see it because of the color. Now, if I change this color, if I change up this color to let's even say a red, you can see the honeycomb, but that's not what we want. So I'm going to turn off my gradient and we are going to make this a distractive element. So I'm going to right click and say convert this to a smart object. So now the gradient has been infused to the text. So if I go back, you notice that now my honeycomb is now showing up on my, um, on my text because now the text uh, gradient has been infused to the actual text. So now with these two sets, we want to go ahead and add a little bit of an outline and a shadow effect to bump up our font. So I'm gonna click on my font that will bring up the layer style. Um, how are you erasing so softly the max? Okay, I'm gonna go back and show you how I'm doing that, okay, in a minute, Sam. So once you bring up the layer style, you wanna go ahead and click on your stroke. Now, once you click on your stroke effect, we want to click on our stroke. We want to change up the color. We want a white. So click anywhere in your design. So you can pick up on the white or you can actually pick up the white in the color um, picker option. 
So with that selected, we can go ahead and increase our size so that our um, so that our image so that the outline stroke begin to show a little bit more. Now I need to go back because I don't want the E to be joined with the eye. So just give me a second. I'm going to just do something real quick. Now I need to open up my text. So once you type in your text, sometimes your text can show up very close. If you want to space up your text, you need to click on your text, go up to your property, under your property, go to your characters and under character, you see the VA. Now you can space up your text or you can even type it in so that you have, um, so that you basically, you basically have good spacing in between your fonts. So I'm gonna go ahead and basically make this 15 and hit enter. I'm gonna go ahead and make this 30, hit enter. So you can see that it's spaced out, but it's not too much. Now I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the same process, right click, convert this into a smart object. Now we are going to go back, double click, and we are back where we were. So click on your stroke effect, click on the stroke. Now you can make your stroke thickness a little bit bigger or smaller. So I think this is good enough. Now we wanna add a little bit of a shadow effect inside our, um, inside the stroke effect. So I'm gonna click on my inside stroke and I'm gonna change the, I'm gonna change the blend mode to normal. And then we are going to go ahead and take the opacity all the way to a hundred. And then we are going to play with the distance. So now you can see the shadow inside is beginning to show. So with that said, we wanna go ahead and add a drop shadow. So notice that the text is good, but it doesn't pop that well. But look at what happens when you add the drop shadow. Now I'm gonna click on my drop shadow and I'm gonna change the blend mode to multiply. And I'm going to take the opacity all the way to 100. Now you see that your text now begins to pop against the white. So this is basically what you want to do. Now we can increase our spread so that our text basically pops very well. So I'm gonna go ahead with this set. I'm gonna basically click okay. And we are good. I love this. Now, back to your question, Sam. If you want to erase anything and you wanted to have a gradual effect, let's say on my subject, if I click back on my subject and I pick up my brush tool and I begin to brush, notice that I have a very smooth gradual effect. Now, that happens because if you right click on your brush, it gives you the brush options. Now, notice that my Hardness is at zero. If I take my hardness to a hundred and I try to do the same thing, notice what happens. Now you notice that it's giving me hard edges. We don't want that. So I'm going to do command Z to go back. So you wanna right click and make sure your hardness is at zero. Now, when you begin to brush, notice that it gives you a very smooth and gradual blend. So I hope I answered your question. Good. All right. So with this set, I'm gonna go back just a little. So with this set, we wanna go ahead and add the word Sunday. So I'm gonna click on my font and I'm going to go ahead and choose the box, the blacks word, and I'm going to click on my foreground. We wanna change our color to red, click okay. Now click anywhere and begin to type. So I'm going to type in Sunday and I'm going to click on my move tool and I'm going to scale it like that, a little bit bigger, double click. Now I wanna rotate. So just hold your mouse around the corner of your, of your text, hold down shift. And we wanna rotate on a right angle and 90 degrees. We wanna set this right here, double click on it. Now we want to set the text on top of the Sunday. So you wanna click on the Sunday layer in your layers, panel, move that above your Sunday layer. Now notice that is right on top. I'm gonna go ahead to move my layers panel so you can see it better. So with this set, if you want to add a little bit of an outline effect to your Sunday, you can do that. You can double click 
on your layer on your layer it will bring up your layer style we can go to the stroke add a little bit of a stroke effect notice that it's taken away from the font so you can click on it and basically reduce the font the stroke thickness to maybe a two so you can still see the the white but it's not too much now if it's too little i can go ahead and basically increase it to maybe a three or make it a four and that is good enough i'm going to go ahead to click OK. So that is it. Now, when you type in your font and you notice that everything is showing in uppercase and not in lowercase, you need to double click on your font, maybe highlight the portion that is still showing in uppercase. Make sure you go under your font, your property, and the type option. If I click on double T, notice that all my font shows up in cups. But if I uncheck the double T, the rest of the fonts I have highlighted will show up in lowercase. So I hope that was a good tip for somebody. Okay, so we are looking good. This is really taking shape. Okay, so if you just joined us, we are recreating this flyer. Okay, so I think that we are very close to where we need to be. So if you just joined us, please do me a favor, give this video a thumbs up, share it like it so that others can also see it and invite your friends to join it okay so sam you are welcome amen god bless you too all right so with this set we want to go ahead and add in the rest of the info so i'm going to click on my font and i'm going to go back and choose the the font we use for service and i'm going to go ahead and begin to type in annual now i'm going to go ahead and type in annual and then conference, and then 2021. And then I'm going to click on my move tool. I'm going to set that right here. Okay, where do I get the black dots? Now you get that basically online. So if you go online, if you go online to Google, Okay, all you need to do is type in black or dotted pattern. Okay, dotted pattern. Okay, when you type in dotted pattern, you get all of these options. So you can click on any of them and then basically save it. So I hope I answered your question. Okay, so with this set, we want to go back here. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in to show you something. Now I'm going to change this. I'm going to highlight and change the color of this one. We want it to be sort of in the blue-ish. And then we want to highlight this. I want to click on my font color and I'm going to change that to the cyan. I'm going to choose something more like that. Click OK. So we have these three. Now, if you want to space, if you want to close up your spacing, you don't need to type every font separate and sort of put it together, but you can basically close up the spacing by going under your property, go to V A over A, and then basically uh, reduce it like that. Now with this set, we want to go ahead and move it and set it in the right location. So once you have this all set, you can go ahead and increase the size if you want. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that it, it basically aligns with the size of the S. So I have something like this. I'm going to zoom out so you can see it. So this is looking really good, okay? So with this set, let's go ahead and basically add in the day that the event is going to take place. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up my shape tool. I'm gonna to pick up my rectangle and I'm going to go ahead and make a rectangle like this. And you will need to go under your property. You will see the options to change up your shape or at the very top right here, you can also see the options. So I'm going to take the fill and I'm going to make that red. I'm going to go to the stroke I want to make sure the stroke color is white. So click on that, make it white. Now we want to increase the stroke thickness. So I'm just going to drag and just eyeball it. So we have something like this. 
Now I'm gonna come out. So now this is what we have. We're gonna put in the information. So pick up your font tool, and then you wanna click on your foreground and background icon, set it to the default black and white, flip the arrow to set the top to white, pick up your type tool. Now we wanna go back and make sure that we have the right font. I'm gonna go ahead and type in 27. I'm going to use my move tool and I'm just going to go ahead to scale it. I'm going to move that and set that right in the middle. So with this set, we wanna go ahead and maybe scale it just a little, set that right there, double click. Now I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so we can see this very well. Now I'm gonna pick up my font again and I'm going to go ahead and type in, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and basically type in December and I'm going to highlight this or I'm going to move this and set that right there. Now I'm going to double click on it and you can change the font or stick with whatever you have and you can go ahead and use your move tool. We're going to set that right there. I'm going to move this up. I'm going to move that. I'm going to move that up as well. And I'm going to make a copy of this command J, make a copy, move that. And then we are going to type in 2021. And I'm going to go ahead and basically increase our shape like this, holding down my shift. Now I want to select these two fonts and I wanna make them a little bit bigger, double click. And I'm going to set that right there. So everything lines up within the box. Now we wanna reduce the bottom. So hold down shift and then select the bottom and basically we are done. So zoom out and voila, this is what we have. Okay, so if you have any questions, feel free, put them in the comments below. So with this set, we wanna go ahead and pick up our type tool again, and we are going to type in starts at, so that's when the service is going to start. We are going to double click, and I'm going to change that to this, and we are going to go ahead and zoom in. I'm going to move that up and I'm going to go ahead and resize it like that. Set that right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of the 27 command J, move that, set that on the bottom. And we are going to say 7 p.m. I'm going to use my move tool and holding down shift, I'm going to scale it like that. And I'm going to set that right there going to zoom out so we can all see. This is looking really good. I'm going to move this up a little. So we have this very nice effect. Now, if I wanna go ahead and move everything in a little, I can select my rectangle, select everything else, and then I'm just going to move that in. And I can also right click and group all of this by linking everything so that if I move this, it's going to basically move it all. Okay, that is a good way to group things. So with this set, we want to go ahead and basically add in the rest of the info. So I'm going to move this up. I'm going to go ahead and click on these two. I'm going to unlink this one, unlink, and I'm going to also unlink the date and link the date. So I'm gonna select these two. I'm going to scale it down a little and set that right there. Okay, so with this set, we wanna go ahead and add in the name of the host. So make a selection, choose whatever font you want. And I'm going to go ahead and type in host. I'm going to type in host pastor. And then I'm going to go ahead and scale it like this, set it right there, double click. And we are going to hit return and add John. 
Martin. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight these two and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to increase the font. So that is a little bit bigger than the host. So notice that I made it um, bigger by just changing up the font size. Now, if you want to space in between, like we did, you just need to go back here to your adjustment and fix it. Now I can actually go in here, highlight this and change it to bold and then change the color of this to red. And boom, we have that. Now, if I wanna make this lighter, I can highlight this font and then make it lighter or change that font to an entirely different font and make that thing. So we have something like this. I'm gonna move this and set that right there. I'm gonna scale it down a little, double click to accept. I'm going to zoom out. So this is what we have. All right, is there any question? One more doubt, where do you get this paper element? The paper element is the same thing, okay? So you go back online and then you go type in paper, torn paper, okay? Torn paper, PNG, okay? If you type in torn paper, PNG, you should be able to get different options. Now, some of them will say, transparent paper, but when you bring it in, it doesn't really have the transparent paper. So you have to click on multiple of them to get the right one, okay? So with this set, we wanna go ahead and zoom in to the bottom and we are going to go ahead and type in a few more info. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in um, watch live at, okay? I'm gonna highlight and then I'm going to flip my foreground to white. And then I'm going to go ahead and rescale like that. And I'm going to set that somewhere here. And I'm trying to align things. So I'm going to pick up my font again. And I'm going to go ahead and just type in www.hopebaptistchurch.com. Okay, so this is basically um, the name of the church. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and scale it down. I'm going to move this and set that right here. We are going to go ahead and make it even smaller, just like that. And then I'm going to type in the address. So I'm gonna make a copy of this, command J, make a copy, move that down and we are going to make up a fake address, <laughs> Oak Drive. Okay, and then I'm going to increase this so that people can see the address much bigger. And I'm going to set that right there like that. Okay, now if you want, you can move these and move them down a little, scale this down just a little bit more and move it down, zoom out. And basically this is what we have. Now I can move this and set that right here. Now notice that I'm trying to line things up. Okay, so you can even line this with that. So it makes sense, you know, everything sort of is well organized. So with this set, we wanna go ahead and add in the name of the church at the top. So make a copy, command J, make a copy, move that to the top. Oops, we can see it. So I'm gonna set it somewhere here and I'm going to name it Hope Baptist Church. And we need to highlight this. We are going to click on the foreground, change the color to the red. And we are going to now move this and set that at the top. And I'm going to go ahead and scale it like that, double click. Now, if you want to add a shadow, you can add a drop shadow effect to it. Now we can even go ahead and add in a logo of the name of the church, okay? So if you have a logo of your church, you can put it right below or wherever you wanna position it, okay? So with this said, let's say that you want to finish up your, uh, your design by bumping up your colors a little. 
Now I've shown you this in so many ways, but I'm gonna go ahead to show you again. You wanna click on the top of your, your layer, the very top layer, hold down shift option, shift option command E, it will make one file for you. Now this is not editable. So this is a file that you can apply a camera raw effect on. So click on that layer, go to filter, click on camera raw filter. Now it will bring up the camera raw filter options for you. You can decrease the temperature, take it back a little. You can increase the contrast. So you notice what it's doing. It's really making the final piece very nice. Now we can go down to our vibrance. If we wanna increase the vibrance, we can do that as well as the saturation, we can do that. And then you can go ahead and click OK. So let me show you the before and after. So this is the before, very muted. Now this is the after. So it really gives your design a very final punch. You see what I'm saying? So I hope that this was very helpful. Uh, one more thing. OK, what did you get the paper element? So I've explained that. Um, I don't know if anybody has any more questions. We are almost at one hour. I know I logged on a few minutes late, but it's almost um, seven to the hour. So I would like to bring this tutorial to a close. If, and if nobody has any questions in the comments, we will go ahead and bring this to a close, all right? And as I said, please like this tutorial, share it, give it a thumbs up. Also share it with other people on social media. And if you want me to show you how to create uh, a flyer that you've seen online, just send me uh, a message online on Instagram and I'll go ahead and replicate the flyer that you sent to me, okay? So I hope that this was very helpful and I will see you back next week. Okay, so take care of yourselves. And thank you all for joining. I love you all. Bye.